viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel, English and Literature with Kara. Mm -hmm. We have been learning. We have been learning about English literature. Thank you for the several subscribers that we've had and for the many views. Thank you for always being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, we want to embark on paper two, question two. Uh, question three, sorry. That is poetry. What is a poem? Who is a persona? What is the subject matter? And which is the style? And yes, who is a poet? Now, a poem is a piece of writing that is full of emotions, written in stanzas, that a poet uses to pass his message. You could be uh, passing um, a message of anger, of love, of hate, of patriotism. You could pass a message of anything. Who is a persona? A persona is that voice that the poet uses to pass the message. He can use any voice. It doesn't restrict you to the kind of uh, a person you are. You can even give a voice to a tree, an object, both living and unliving things. You could, as long as you're using that voice, the keyword there is the voice in a poem is a persona. What is a, a style in poetry? Style is a way of writing. You choose a certain way. The art of doing things, the art of passing that message is the style. Who is a poet? A poet is that person who came up with that idea of writing down that poem. You have your idea, even if you, you are the one who comes up with that idea, you as the person that observes that subject, that uh, topic that you need to take care of, you become a poet. That writer, the writer is the poet. And the subject matter is the, the information that you're giving. There's an issue that has made you come up with that piece of work. That is what you call a subject matter. A subject matter sometimes can be called a theme, a topic, as long as what you're addressing there is what you, you are saying it's a, a theme, that information there. Now, I have an interesting poem here that I'd like to read for you. It's called, I want an African man. I want an African man. So today we want to learn Poem called I Want an African Man. Now, are you ready to listen to my poem? Uh, the poem is Nalia, by Naliaka Kisaka. I want to read for you this poem I Want an African Man. Tell me what you think when you listen to that. By the end of the message, you tell me whether I really want an African man or, or I desperately want an African man. Let us read the poem. I want an African man who will, will lay me on my way to work and marry me by force. I want an African man who does last night's leftover for breakfast. Last night's leftover break, uh, ugali for breakfast. I want an African man who beats me up, even without a mistake, a man who beats you, loves you. I want an African man who goes into the bathroom when he realizes the water is cold, marches away and never comes back again. I want an African man who will go to America and bring Michelle Obama as his second wife and command her to serve me. I want an African man who will go to Busa beer party and gets drunk, then command me to carry him. I want an African man who earns three times
times less than what I am, yet provides for me and my family. I want an African man who will force me to have 15 children and marry off all the girls at the age of 16. I want an African man, typically stubborn man, whose God of irresponsibility is shining on his African face. Now, what do you think of that? Do I really want an African man? I've said I want an African man. I've said I want an African man. Think about that. Who is this persona? Who is the persona? Remember we said the persona is there? That voice in the poem. There is someone say, who is saying, I want an African man. Who is this? Would you relate that? This person that is able to have 15 children, having been married, who is this that says, who will waylay me on my way to work and marry me by force? It has to be an unmarried woman, a professional unmarried woman. That is our persona. That is the persona. Okay. Now, who is the poet? The poet is quite simple. I just told you the name of that person that has written that piece of work is Naliaka Kisaka. Now, did you notice this poem has stanzas, it has several lines, and each line has a way of uh, running through that message. That one is called, uh, you know now it's a poem because it has several stanzas. What is the subject matter in this poem? What is this poem talking about? If this person says, I want an African man, definitely this person is talking about the issues, the representation of the African man, what he does. So we know, now we learn that he will, uh, uh, this man drinks, hmm? uh, there is domestic violence, because uh, she says that, who will beat me up, even without a mistake? And those ideologies, those traditions, uh, misleading traditions, that a man who beats you, loves you. Did you realize there is a certain way of passing this message. When this person says, I want an African man, when indeed this person is scared of this man, this woman here is scared of this African man, how do we know that she doesn't like the African man? Because of the use of self called irony. Irony is the opposite. When you say something, verbal irony, when you say something that you mean the opposite, it is meant to cut off that bitterness. This person does not say, an African man is a drunk, an African man wants 15 children. Although, by the way, we don't have such African men. We are just coming up with that. A few could be there, but you come to Africa and you'll see gentlemen that's a disclaimer. But according to this poem, we have uh, that, you, that style. This persona has used irony, satire. She's being satirical. She mocks this African man that believes in beating up a woman, forcing a woman into marriage, and also this man that goes out drinking and then he tells the wife to carry him also practices polygamy. I don't think that the persona approves of it. Do you think the persona approves of that? Not so, because of the style called irony. Did you notice there is another style in that poem? The persona keeps on saying, I want an African man. That one is the use of repetition. Where you say, when we talk of style, 
it's not just iron, but we have seen that there is also use of repetition. She keeps on saying, I want an African man. I want an African man. I want an African man who will waylay me. I want an African man who does last night's Ugani leftovers. So that's use of the, the repetition. Words can be repeated, but this one has uh, repeated um, phrases. Why do we use repetition? It's also good for you to realize when you're, uh, a certain style is used with a certain purpose. That's what we'll be looking at, effectiveness. In paper two, we look at effectiveness. If you know exactly that, and I hope you have realized that what we are doing, we are looking at this point line by line. And in poetry, we don't have sentences, by the way. We have what you call lines. Have you heard a musician say, I, I have a few lines? Also in poetry, in poems, we have lines. A line, a, a, a number of lines that makes a stanza. And several stanzas, they can be three stanzas, four stanzas, make up a poem. And that poem is a whole idea. So we have seen those two styles we have seen there, they are not the only styles that you have. When you look at poetry, you can also pay attention to the last word, the last word in that line, in a vertical manner. The last word in every line, like we, we could have even 20 lines and you look at the last word, will, and, falls, does, fast, and you'll say, ah, this one does not have rhyme, but there are some other styles uh, that, that uh, but we have other uh, poems that could have a style like rhyme. We could also have other styles, like um, even sound patterns. We have different kinds of sound patterns when we are looking at poems. Those are features of poems and also styles that we no normally have in our pieces of writing. And I hope you have enjoyed my lessons. Have a lovely time. Bye. Bye.